Antarctica volcano warning after scientists suggest an eruption could cause, of course, sea level rise because, of course, the ice would be melting. Now, we know that Antarctica, just a few years ago, was believed to have only 47 volcanoes, and then suddenly using uh, Landsar, the geologists found that it has another 100. This is Mount Michael, for example, steaming on top. The most well-known is Mount Erebus. You saw the uh, 19th century carving image of Mount Erebus exploding. And also my Mount uh, Hebeke, I think it's called. Anyway, there's so many of the uh, volcanoes there that are currently active. And uh, they're beneath the ice, hidden, with some scientists suggesting that an eruption could cause global sea levels to rise. Believe it or not, over 100 volcanoes, 147, are scattered across Antarctica. Scientists recently discovered the largest volcanic region on Earth there. The largest volcanic region on Earth is in Antarctica. Two kilometers under the surface of the vast ice sheet covering the west side of the continent, one of the highest found was the tall, as tall as the Eiger, the famous mountain in Switzerland that stands 3,967 meters, that's over 10,000 feet in height. So it's the largest volcanic region of the Earth, and uh, one of the highest was found on the west coast. That's where we know the uh, west coast area is uh, having the ice sheets calving. The team from Edinburgh University, who made the discovery in 2017, claimed that the region was likely to dwarf that of East Africa's volcanic ridge, which was rated as having the densest concentration of volcanoes in the world. Right now, there are only two active volcanoes in Antarctica, Mount Rebus and Deception Island. They're both unique in their geological makeup, and they're completely different to many found around the world. While scientists who work in and study Antarctica say the volcanoes are unlikely to pose any real threat anytime soon, I highly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. Some have suggested that their eruption could have a knock-on effect around the world. John Semele, professor of Volcanology University of Leicester said, previously suggested that any movement from these volcanoes could create significant amounts of meltwater, obviously, and this water would then slowly stream into the sea, raising levels. In 2017, he told the conversation about the structure of these volcanoes, he said the volcanoes would melt huge caverns in the base of the ice and create enormous quantities of meltwater. Now, that means uh, melting rivers underneath the uh, ice caps. Because the West Antarctic ice sheet is wet rather than frozen to its bed, imagine an ice cube on a kitchen work table. The meltwater would act as a lubricant and could cause the overlying ice to slip and move away rapidly. These volcanoes can also stabilize the ice However, as they give it some, some, something to grip onto, imagine that some ice cubes snagged onto a lump-sized object. He says, in any case, the volume of water that would be generated by even a large volcano is a pinprick compared with the volume of overlying ice. See, he says, so a single eruption would not have much effect on the ice flow. What would make a big difference is if several volcanoes erupt close to or beneath any of West Antarctica's prominent ice streams. When it comes to freshwater reserves, around 80% of the planet's stores are in Antarctica. If melted, this would raise global sea levels by about 60 meters. It's about 180 to 200 feet. Can you imagine? 200 feet means that most of East Coast United States, Canada, and the west coast, it's 200 feet level, 300 feet level, 
200 feet, sorry. Scientists have pointed out that this would make the planet uninhabitable for humans. Professor Semele claimed that an eruption beneath the ice could cause this process to speed up. He says ice streams are rivers of ice that flow much faster than their surroundings. They're the zones along which most of the ice in Antarctica is delivered to the ocean and therefore fluctuate in their speed can affect the sea levels. If the additional lubricant, he says, provided by multiple volcanic eruptions was channeled beneath ice streams, the subsequent rapid flow may dump unusual amounts of West Antarctica's thick interior ice into the ocean, causing sea levels to rise. He says, under ice volcanoes are probably what trigger the rapid flow of ancient ice streams into the vast Ross Ice Shelf, Antarctica's largest ice shelf. He says something similar might have occurred about 2,000 years ago with a small volcano in the Hudson Mountains that lie underneath West Antarctica ice sheet. If it erupted again today, it could cause the nearby Pine Island Glacier to speed up. He said, the most dramatic of all, a large series of eruptions could destabilize many more subglacial volcanoes. As volcanoes cool and crystallize, their magma chambers become pressurized, and all that prevents the volcanic gases from escaping violently in an eruption is the weight of overlying rock, in this case, several kilometers of ice. And as that ice becomes much thinner, the pressure reduction may trigger eruptions. And also, we don't know if they have uh, connecting chambers. They don't, I, I haven't seen any uh, articles on that, Antarctic volcanoes and the magma chambers underneath Antarctica. This is by Joel Day, Express UK. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support.